Okay, everybody, we're going to call our meeting to order. This is the recess session of the Nags Head Board of Commissioners. It's Wednesday, July the 17th. Uh, and the first order of business for us is the adoption of the agenda. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion passes unanimously. Our next item is audience response. Uh, we do have a public hearing this evening, so if, if you are here to speak about the, the issues on the public hearing, if you can wait for that one, we'd appreciate it. Uh, other than that, anybody with audience response? Yes, sir. If you'll come to the podium and identify yourself and your address, Mr. White. I'm Perry White, and I live on Villa Dunes Drive. I had a pleasant surprise this afternoon. I stopped for a hot dog at the corner of Barnes and 158 and saw the new sign indicating the town park. Thank you. Whoever put it up, it's about time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Perry. It is a great little park. Anybody else for public comment this evening? Anybody at all? Seeing none, we're going to close public comment, our audience response part. And our next item is the consent agenda. Move to adopt as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. Motion passes unanimously. And now we come to our public hearing. Uh, this is really the, the guts of this meeting to consider modifications to the town land use plan. And Mr. Lighty, will you conduct this for us, sir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, at this time, we will begin the public hearing to consider various modifications to the town's land use plan. And we're going to begin with the uh, presentation of the staff's analysis from Planning Director Elizabeth Teague. Thank you, Mr. Lighty. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, and members of the public. This public hearing has been called to consider amendments to the land use plan, and the purpose of these amendments was to update our land use plan um, relative to the action of beach nourishment. Uh, many of you may recall there was a good bit of information and discussion provided as part of the land use plan development process, wherein beach nourishment was a key goal for um, the town to accomplish within the land use plan. Now that that goal has been achieved, uh, the idea was to go back and look at how we need to adjust the, the land use plan to recognize that the new beach is out there and to um, lay the context for future protections of the Nourish Beach and future management of the Nourish Beach going forward. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the board, I would like to ask your um, indulgence a little bit because I want to change my staff recommendation a little bit. Um, we wanted you to have the whole, hold the public hearing and then possibly adopt the draft that you have tonight. But I would say that um, because we had gotten the draft out to so many people, um, not just your planning board but also to CAMA staff and to the town attorney, we've had some additional comments even coming in as late as today. So what you have is sort of a version of the, of the um, amendments that came out of the planning board. It had been reviewed once by the attorney, but there's some additional analysis that's come forward. So what I'd like you to, um, to invite you to do is hold the public hearing and then allow us to uh, take all the comments in, give you a clean copy that you can have some time with, and then you can adopt it at your meeting in August. Um, that should give you more time with the actual version that you would adopt rather than trying to incorporate a lot of comments that we got yesterday and today, tonight. Um, and also, uh, just to let you know, we do have uh, Sharlyn Owens from CAMA here who can help address any of the questions you might have for her. All that said, I, I want to um, start out as I as kind of, uh, describe the process with a, a great thanks to both our planning board members, uh, CAMA staff, and our town attorneys who spent a good bit of time looking at what we were trying to accomplish in these amendments, uh, making sure the language accommodated both current and future uses and needs. Um, the planning board uh, looked at the initial draft um, in June at their regular meeting 
heard some comments from the attorney actually called for a special meeting where they just dedicated up to two hours just talking about the land use plan. And I, I greatly appreciated the thought that they put into it. And that's a good place to start. In looking at the land use plan and the goals to protect the newly nourished beach, uh, the planning board and staff um, held some deep discussions about what does it mean, what are, what are some of the key words and how are they defined and what do they mean not just um, in terms of CAMA, but also in terms of common usage and common understanding. So you'll see in some of the um, text changes that we wanted to clearly define what we meant by things like ocean beach, mean high water mark, static vegetation line, uh, first line of natural stable vegetation, and the ocean hazard area of environmental concern, and, and make sure that people understood those terms. We also uh, discussed public trust rights on the ocean beach related to the mean high water mark and the static vegetation line, and the need to preserve public access across that, those areas that we consider public trust beach. Um, not just because of the public right to a beach across the ocean, but also because of health and human safety and the ability of emergency vehicles and first responders to get access. We also um, talked about the use of sandbags on the beach, um, both their positives and their negatives, uh, understanding that in some cases they are necessary for certain property owners um, and that in some cases they actually have been very successfully used. Um, and, and there was an acknowledgement that while some sandbags were sort of absorbed into a sand dune, or some sandbags were used temporarily and then removed at the time of beach nourishment. There was a significant number of sandbags that stayed out in the beach and were not removed, and actually um, became an issue that we had to deal with to nourish the beach. It was difficult to, to actually get those sandbags removed. So one concern, obviously, is going forward, the town is committed to maintaining this nourished beach, and we certainly don't want to allow new sandbags in that would prohibit additional nourishment of the beach. Um, we also talked about uh, point and non-point source pollution uh, and what it means um, in terms of having septic and erosion problems out on the beach and what, what that can mean. We know that um, in the town of Nags Head, stormwater is a major concern. And that's what we consider non-point source pollution. It's not coming from a pipe. It's coming from um, parking lots, uh, storm drains getting inundated, and the pollutants that are picked up in stormwater and flushed out into surface waters. Well, similarly, we are concerned about septic systems being placed eastward of the static line or first line of stable vegetation. And when those high tide waters get up and a septic system is washed out or flooded, what does that do to our surface water? Uh, there was um, a good bit of concern about not just uh, erosion from sandbags or septic systems that may be on the beach or exposed, but the public health impl implications of those. Uh, finally, um, there was a good deal of discussion also about visually. You know, what does it mean when you have sandbags on the beach? or a, a septic system that may be buried at one time but then gets exposed with a, um, a hurricane or storm event. So uh, with that, the planning board looked at some of the proposed recommendations for amending uh, the land use plan. And it's a little bit complicated because it's a thick document and there's discussion of the beach in several parts. So in the land use plan amendment, we had to go through and look at both the purpose statements, the land use policies, um, the uh, sort of goals and action items of the land use plan, and make sure that we were adequately trying to update each part of the land use plan accordingly to these goals. Last thing I'll say, because I know there are probably some other people here that may want to comment, is that um, the land use plan itself is a guidance document. It creates a reference and a framework for which uh, the town can make planning decisions moving forward. 
in a CAMA community such as ours, it's also a requirement as part of participation in CAMA, as part of um, being a CAMA community, we have to do a land use plan in accordance with CAMA guidelines that show how we are managing and planning for our land use over the long term uh, as a coastal community. So uh, land use plans are both a guidance document in a broad, broad sense, but they're also a requirement of CAMA. Therefore, it's important that the amendments that we have are reviewed by CAMA staff and certified by staff, and then these amendments will be forwarded on to the CRC and our goal is to try to get a clean package to them by August 27th to be part of their agenda packet uh, for the September meeting. So I'm happy to answer any questions at this, this time. And again, um, Ms. Owens is here from CAMA and Mr. Lighty could probably answer some of the attorney related questions. Are there any questions for Mrs. Teague? Thank you. All right, uh, Ms. Owens, do you wish to uh, comment or to present anything? All right, thank you. Um, anybody from the planning board wish to comment on this or discuss anything about the plan? We have several people here who could. I'll just make a great, one great comment. All right, thank you. I think Elizabeth has covered most of the comments from the planning board. The planning board did consider this very seriously, and, and we did have a, a call a special meeting because uh, uh, the uh, our attorneys brought in some language at the last at the last minute, and we didn't want, want to just discuss that before we started it. So we did have a special special two-hour meeting. But the document that I downloaded yesterday from our, our website is certainly not the document we passed. I think the intent is the same. Uh, I think it uh, will end up as the same result, but the, the format and the comma uh, comments uh, were not part of the document that we, uh, that we, that we passed at the planning board. And I wanted to make, make that plain that, uh, that those comments had been added after the, after the planning board meeting. I think uh, we have members here, if there are members who disagree with those comments, I invite them to come forward now. Uh, so we invited all of the planning board last night to come if they, they might have comments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to comment on the, on the plan? Mr. Murphy? My name's Richard Murphy at 8817 South Oregon Inlet Road. <clears throat> I, I too am a member of the planning board, but I'm not here speaking necessarily for the planning board. <laughs> I'm speaking a personal opinion that I brought up during our uh, planning board discussions. And <clears throat> one thing that I was real concerned about is uh, totally prohibiting sandbags. I. I tried to show a, a pro and con. Everybody has a negative opinion of sandbags, <clears throat> but sandbags, when they're used right, maintained right, and installed right, and vegetated, don't, do not pose a problem. I would prefer to see our amendments to the land use plan say any sandbags east of the pre nourishment a high water mark could we could not install any septic tanks east of that point because I think it's a useful tool that we are taking away from some of our residents that should we lose all the nourished beach then we back where we were you know pre nourishment we do not I don't know that we want to take that tool away because we could have some damaged properties now I know everybody thinks about the properties at Seagull Street. You know, they're sitting out on the Nourish Beach, you know, and, and they're unsightly, and there's been black bags and brown bags that are on the beach that we had to pull up during nourishment. All those things are negative issues. I myself had a positive uh, 
experience with sandbags. After Isabel, it wiped out a dune in front of my house that was 48 foot wide and 28 foot high. Shoved it in the front row in the front yard, moved it all the way out to the road. <clears throat> I spent eighteen thousand dollars moving that sand back to the dune, reforming the dune, vegetated it. Two years later, the Thanksgiving storm shoved it right back in the front yard. It was uh, had no stability whatsoever. I applied and got a permit to put sandbags in. I engineered the design of the sandbags, the way they were stacked and everything, and I backfilled on the west side of the sandbags with some really stable soil. And then I started working to cover the bags. I, I hauled in to cover the bags, vegetated them. Now I've got bags there that you would not even know. The dune is almost as big as it was prior to Isabel, and I've got as much as 12 foot of sand on top of the dune, uh, on top of the bags. And so if they're installed and maintained right, and we have the proper requirements as a town, it's a useful tool that we may want to be very selective in using, but to absolutely prohibit it, I, I'm not so sure that that's what we need to do. I think we need to change the wording a little bit and maybe allow it, like I say, west of the pre-nourished high water mark. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Does anyone else wish to comment on this plan, these amendments to the proposed uh, land use plan. Anybody? It, uh, does the board wish to receive any further information about this at all at this time? Yes, ma'am. You have questions for Elizabeth? Yeah, I have a Ms. question Teague? for Elizabeth, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Elizabeth, uh, in our packet tonight, we have that um, the beach nourishment project that must be monitored and maintained in the future. The town opposes any new installation of sandbags seaward of the static vegetation line or the stable yes. natural vegetation. Um, so what are we doing about the existing sandbags? We're just... We're not doing anything, and, and this plan does not address those sandbags. Uh, the sandbags that are on the beach now were permitted by CAMA. Uh, they were supposed to be removed, and CAMA has been working with them. Those permits individually, uh, there was an extension granted to some of them. The, the goal here is to prevent additional sandbags being placed on the beach from this point forward. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, any other questions? Ms. Teague? Yes, sir. Absolutely. John Ratzenberger, I live by one. Sea Watch Court in the village. And I want to commend Mr. Murphy because he's probably got the only correct sandbag on the shoreline. <laughs> so I commend you for what you did. And if every other one had been done that way, we probably wouldn't have that perception. But the bottom line of the history is, and I spent X years living in South Nags Head watching it happen, is that no sandbags were put in properly. The permitting process was questionable as to how they got in. We know what happened at the state level. The deadlines and dates to change and fix the problem changed every year. I could sit here and list property after property after property where somebody stood in here, ran it and raved till they got their sandbags, put them in, and destroyed the property next to them because it was a point solution, not a shoreline solution. And in some cases, the person destroyed their own house because of the way they put them in. Now that happened up and down Surfside, it happened up and down Seagull, and it spots in between. I think we have enough history in the town to show that we simply can't trust that process. If we had everybody on the shore did, like Mr. Murphy did, great. But it, that doesn't happen. And if we're in this situation again, five, ten years, whatever, if all this beach is gone, we know it didn't work in the past. It only made the solution, the situation worse. And I personally would recommend that we shut it down. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Ratzenberger. All right, anybody else? Anything further for the planning department? I did want to mention we have the um, static line maps available here in the back of the room if anyone would like to look at them. And also we have copies, extra copies of the land use plan available. So as you can see, it's a thick document. Uh, but we did bring a few, if there are any members uh, of the public that want to look through a land use, the land use plan and see what it is. Elizabeth, you mentioned um, some revisions to what we've got in front of us. Can you give us some idea of, of what those would involve? Are they, are they legal distinctions or definitions? Uh, the draft you have before you was a version of, well, I can give you the history of the draft if you would. Back in June, when we called for the public hearing, we brought forward a, a draft, sort of a first run, and here are some of the areas in the land use plan that need to be amended, and here's what we recommend. Then that was forwarded to the planning board with some additional comments uh, by the attorneys. Um, we were also looking at that point at a possible, maybe a, a sandbag ordinance, and then at the planning board meeting, we held back and allowed the land use plan process to go forward and then we could re-examine a local ordinance later on. Um, so then the planning board tabled the land use plan discussion and set a special call meeting. So there was a version of that that went forward to them uh, and they worked on that version. <coughs> we took their comments and sent it again to the attorney at the planning board's direction to make sure that the, the um, attorney had looked at it. He made additional comments, and a lot of those comments were actually uh, pretty detailed, particularly when it came to some of the definitions that we were concerned about. So um, Mr. Uh, Edwards is right in that what actually came forward to you from that point looked different than what had originally come to the planning board. I, I will note that uh, the planning board minutes are available. They were approved last night by the planning board. There's some good discussion that's captured in there. Um, and <coughs> from both the regular meeting and the special call meeting that may be of interest. And then now uh, the draft that we have since provided to you, CAMA staff has also had an opportunity to look at it. They did not make any changes to sort of substantive changes, but they we're looking for what they call internal consistency with the existing document, making sure certain changes were under the right headings, making sure that uh, we are being consistent in some of our language and how we had set up uh, and formatted our policy discussions. Now, in terms of the changes from the planning board to now, uh, one of the things that the attorneys did look at was in those definitions, making sure that we're sort of striking that balance between our understanding of public trust speech and private property and the mean high watermark. And there was a good bit of a discussion about the mean high watermark and whether it, it moves. It, as you know, uh, both the static line and the mean high watermark were surveyed prior to beach nourishment. Um, but in some cases, like along the case along the houses in Seagull, where not everyone gave an easement, that mean high water mark is actually varied from the other, uh, from the, the mean high water mark that's shown on those pre-nourishment maps. Uh, there's also in certain cases some ways in which a property owner could apply to the courts, could apply to the state um, to adjust that mean high water mark from the pre-nourishment ma maps, which was not something that we understood going in. So um, some of the language was adjusted accordingly. I'll say that um, despite that, the intent of the changes has remained the same. And that intent is to protect the newly nourished beach from future loca location or, uh, or use of sandbags eastward of the static line, and also to um, try and prevent where we can additional septic systems being placed uh, in that situation again because of the past experience we've seen. So um, s the changes substantively and legally um, I think 
while a lot of the language has changed, I think at the heart it's still the same intent and a lot of the same um, basic principles that came through and came out of the planning board initially. Um, but again, because there are some changes, I would recommend that we not try to actually adopt a, a full-on um, version of this now. Let us prepare sort of a clean copy with all the comments up to today and, and anything that comes out of this meeting to let you look at it and have something going forward and something you can spend a little bit more time with. Just briefly, can you elaborate a little bit on moving the mean high water line? Because I have not heard that before I'm tonight. actually <laughs> going to ask for Mr. Lighty's help. And, I'm not going to comment on that. That's something beyond, seriously, that's beyond my expertise. Ben Gallup may be familiar with that, that particular process as far as moving that goes. Mm -hmm. I could comment on the other portion she talked about where in some places the pre-project surveyed line is not necessarily the real line. Uh, that's, that's a product of um, the, uh, an operation of statute which provides that the lands raised above mean high water at the outset of the project through a publicly funded beach nourishment project becomes state land. What she's referring to is an area where the land that was raised above mean high water was not in the area where the pre-project mean high water survey showed it because it was too close or underneath structures. And so the contractor had to move some area seaward from that and that was the closest area they could nourish. There's an argument that that's where the mean high water line is there as opposed to what's actually shown on the survey which would appear in any other regular part of the beach. So that's that's that particular issue but as far as the process that someone can go through to move it, actually uh, uh, Ms. Cahoon may be able to comment on that. I know it's, there's some CRC rules that deal with that but there is a process that a landowner can go through to try to show some changes in that but I, I don't know exactly how that's done. <laughs> I won't take a stab with that one. I don't want to touch that one either. And, and I will add that the discussion in the land use plan uh, and the, the direction we got from the attorney was just to open up the language a little bit so that we, the, the, the legal context of what is possible is reflected in the plan and we're not inadvertently putting ourselves in conflict with the law, which um, required some additional wording. And, uh, it took us, um, I, th I think, a, it was a process to actually understand that, that that mean high water mark that had been surveyed pre-nourishment is not as static as we may think it is. It, there, there are some opportunities there for individual landowners to possibly petition the state and have that adjusted. So. And towns have done that. Towns have petitioned to have lines moved, and uh, in <coughs> cases they have been granted. That's right, and I, I will say that uh, Emerald Isle Beach, I, I had a good conversation with their planning director, <coughs> and that is one location where, as a result of beach nourishment, the dunes did significantly grow oceanward, and so they reached a point where it made sense for them to um, sort of change that static line status to a natural first line of stable vegetation which which granted some property back i do want to comment on that though that, that didn't occur just because the lot the dunes became stable it occurred because the town of emerald isle presented a 20-year financial plan that showed that they were committed to maintaining that growth mm -hmm. um, not just and that was only after five years of observing that. You have to wait five years to even ask for it, but then you have to present a 20-year financing plan to show that the town was committed to maintaining that nourished beach and that that growth would not be just temporary, but it would essentially be the term of a mortgage, mm -hmm. a 20-year mortgage. And it was the, the whole town that was, that affected, not just an individual property. Right. It was not an individual property. It was the whole town, and they ended up... I believe with somewhere in the range of 60 to 80 lots that had been unbuildable mm -hmm. becoming <coughs> because of the setback line change. But like I say, the town of Emerald Isle went through a very deliberate process 
um, their shoreline commission for Carteret County. Their beach nourishment is very much dedicated to beach nourishment. Um, they have representatives that determine the process by which the money is used on a rational basis, not an <coughs> emotional basis. And it's not subject to political will. It's very much defined in their legislative mandate. So that Emerald Isle is probably the exception to anywhere in the state. They're the only ones that I know that have really been granted that because of a beach nourishment project and the commitment that goes along with that. Um, now, Dare County got an exception to a static line after Isabel because there was no vegetation on the beach whatsoever. But that also took an act of legislature to do. We're still in the public hearing, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you would please go up to the podium and do it. But yes. I'll be very brief. One thing I forgot to mention. Uh, <coughs> CAMA allows sandbags to stay in place if they are covered and vegetated. And the bags in front of my house and the one north of me have, like I said, have probably 10 foot of sand on top of them and as much as 30 foot of sand in front of them as well as behind them. And I probably have the best crop of sea oaks along the entire coast. So if you do it right and you spend a lot of time fertilizing and irrigating and stuff, it can be done successfully. And the reason I put those in was not necessarily to protect the house, but to have a foundation for that dune. And, so, and that stabilized the base of that dune. After it washed out with that Thanksgiving storm, I was just shocked that it moved that much sand again. So thank you. All right, anybody else, is there anyone else who wishes to comment on the proposed amendments to the land use plan? If so, this is your chance. And if not, we're going to close public comment. Does the board wish to receive any other information in this hearing? All right, we'll conclude the public hearing on this, uh, on the proposed amendments to the land use plan, and the board may begin deliberations. Well, how about if we take each other's temperature about how we feel about these revisions and wait for kind of that final draft that Elizabeth tells us is coming. Um, but how, how do you all feel about what's in front of us now, the, the gist of it, I guess the, the content, not necessarily the, the details on the definitions? I feel very comfortable overall. I, um, I appreciate Mr. Murphy's comments. Um, I think he's one of the few that I've ever seen that really has taken the time to nourish his dunes um, and make them healthy. Um, but overall, with what's in this document, or proposed document, um, I'm comfortable with the direction because I don't see um, the CRC's rules really being enforced as to sandbags. We've issued our policy guidelines and that's about as far as it's gotten. So I think the town has to take some steps on our own to move forward. Well, I have never taken, as you well know, through the years of discussion with about sandbags, the hard, we don't need more sandbags as other board members have because I feel very strongly that um, Dick Murphy has made a prime example of the way it should be done. And maybe the fault in the past has actually not <coughs> lied with CAMA so much as through our own lack of supervision when we have given somebody um, um, sandbag permission and I'm going back I'm going back years maybe we <coughs> have failed in seeing that sandbags when they have gotten uh, permits have not been properly installed have not been covered have not been and 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 maybe the fault lies with the town because when you can see 
a stabilized dune as Dick has, and then you look at the others that have failed, um, why, why have they failed? Is it, it, it's just, it's, and I'll go to sand fencing. Why has some sand fencing worked and others have not? It's properly, properly, properly installation. Um, I, I, um, I'm hoping that this newly nourished beach will last a lot longer than what we were, um, the time frame we were led to believe um, by our engineering firm. But in the event it doesn't, we, we may find, future boards may find themselves back to where we were three years ago. And to just outlaw something that, that can work um, with, with proper installation is at that time, I think it's going to be right back in the face of whomever is sitting up here saying, well, what do we do now? We're losing the ocean, we're losing our streets, we're losing our water lines, but we can't allow any sandbags. I, I think that if you didn't draw such a firm line and, and say no sandbags will be allowed from today forward, you, you're, for those who follow us, we're leaving them a very hard uh, obstruction to overcome. And I think that something along the lines, as Dick suggested, um, allowing them westward of the um, newly established mean high watermark or not allowing them eastward of the static line or whatever the proper verbiage would be is something that we might want to consider <coughs> rather than a new board having to be faced with this in five or seven years and saying, well, we, we can't allow you to use this temporarily or, or whatever. So I'm, um, I'm um, a little on the fence with that. I don't say, and you will never allow this again. You never say never. You, you, you just, um, you know, I'm just a little worried about that. So. Thank you, ma'am. Sure. Um, well, I, I would like to thank the, the planning board and staff and, and the attorneys for working so hard to um, really capture what I think is the direction that this board provided and um, from what I've seen so far it, it's a very <coughs> comprehensive document and I've seen some of the few changes here and there and, and comments so far but um, I would like to see the final a final draft the final document so we can see what it looks like with all of that in it and and then at that point you know have the attorneys look at it review it one more time um, just just to make sure, you know, sometimes when you're incorporating a lot of stuff, it, it, uh, you, know, you can lose something there or, or put a word in there that may cause you problems later. But now that we have the nourished beach, um, and, which is really a huge investment on the part of this town and all of its citizens, I, I think we, I think there's a commitment there to maintain it. We've said there is, and um, I think we, and keep the septic tanks off the beach and do what we can to maintain it for the future, so. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> I've, <clears throat> I've pushed on the sandbags piece some, and it's, it's mainly due to our experience with um, some of the homes on, on Seagull or the prime examples, I guess, and that when the sandbags are there, you've got a line that you can't go back beyond. And what happened with us when we were coming up to nourishment after that November storm was there really wasn't any public beach left. And I, and I think our main mission really has to be to protect that access to the public beach uh, for, for all, the, all the residents, all the visitors, every, everybody from all over the country that, that comes to North Carolina for the beaches. Uh, not to mention the public safety aspects of being able to get a lifeguard or uh, police 
uh, vehicle, four-wheeler up and down the beach. And we really lost a lot of that. Um, and I, I personally believe a lot of it was due to sandbags. And if we hadn't had sandbags, I think you probably wouldn't have had the septic tanks behind the sandbags. Um, so I, I look five or 10 or 15 years down the road, and I hope we won't be in that same situation again. But I also think that a, a future board might, might thank us for not having those real, they were real obstacles to nourishment. And, um, and the sandbags were really the, the root cause of that. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what I see. I do want to, like everybody, want to wait and see the final document. And uh, I guess we will look for Ms. Teague to bring that back to us at our meeting in, in August. Any, any further comments on the changes to the land use plan, revisions to the land use plan? Seeing none, we're going to move on to item number F. Uh, Chief, how are you this evening? <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Board of Commissioners. Uh, Coming before you today with a uh, taxi cab applicant that applied uh, on May 30th for a permit to drive a, a taxi in the town of Nags Head uh, pursuant to our town code uh, and certain requirements that the driver, uh, the applicant did not meet, I de de denied his permit. And I do not believe he's present in the, uh, in the room tonight. He, he's not present tonight? Mr. Harrell? No, sir. Mr. Harrell, no, Mr. Harrell. Well, this, is, this was the second, second appointment. Yes, sir. Um, okay. We will, we don't have to take any action then. Well, you, he has made an appeal so the board can take action to deny the appeal. I think we did that last time. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yes, you did this is the second bite at the apple. <laughs> mm. um, all right. Good enough. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, old business. Item number G, discussion consideration of revised Moongate subdivision maintenance agreement. Mr. Ryan. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Board of Commissioners. Um, I'm here before you this evening um, to uh, reconsider the uh, draft maintenance and access agreement for the Moongate Subdivision uh, Homeowners Association. At the July 3rd, uh, 2013 Board of Commissioners meeting, the board tabled a motion for consideration of a draft maintenance and access agreement with the Moongate Subdivision property owners, specifically the property owners of lots one through seven, describing the terms, conditions, and restrictions of the existing 25-foot utility and drainage easement. The board had directed staff to go ahead and amend that draft agreement to include the following provisions. One was a modification to item number two within that agreement. Uh, the second sentence to be amended to include there shall be no gates, doors, or openings in the eastern or rear sides of the fencing and also a sentence to be added indicating the agreement shall not be effective until all parties, uh, specifically property owners of lots one through seven, uh, execute the agreement. So in your packet is the amended draft agreement uh, which includes those provisions and uh, also uh, is the other information that has been provided by Utilities Inc. as far as setting forth their provisions for any maintenance that should be necessary um, and that horizontal distance that needs to be maintained for them to uh, conduct any of those actions. Uh, the specific action requested this evening is for a motion to approve the draft agreement with appropriate parties with the described terms, conditions, and restrictions within the drainage and utility easement with authorization given to the town attorney to negotiate any non-substantial changes to the agreement and requested by the other parties that do not alter the principal goals of the agreement. I'll entertain any questions that you have and the town attorney will weigh in on any of the legal nuances with that agreement. Any questions for Mr. Ryan? Questions for Mr. Lighting? Entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the draft agreement with the appropriate parties to describe terms, conditions, and restrictions 
within the drainage and utility easement with the authorization given to the town attorney to negotiate any non-substantial changes to the agreement requested by the other parties that do not alter the principal goals of the agreement. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Further discussion? Only thank you to the board for allowing these changes to be made. I appreciate the board's consideration about the gates, the fences, the openings. Good changes. It made a better, better document with making sure that everybody signed it as well. Um, further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. The motion passes unanimously. All right. Thank you. New business? Any new business? No. None. None. Good. Uh, the town and you know, items returned, referred to are presented from the town attorney. Mr. Mayor, at the uh, appropriate time, I'd like the board to go into closed session in order to discuss the pending uh, condemnation uh, cases that the town has filed um, in connection with the beach nourishment project and also to confer with the um, uh, town's attorney and preserve the attorney-client privilege. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor? I don't have anything. Oh, my God. It's a conspiracy. Board of Commissioners agenda. Commissioner Walters? Commissioner Sadler? I defer to you, Mayor. <laughs> Only one. Um, as y'all have been made aware, there's a committee that's working on pedestrian and bicycle safety, and the Department of Transportation has been really good. They've provided us with a lot of printed materials, such as I look for bikes and I break for people. I'll leave some for everybody to take, as well as a watch for me, talking about safety as a shared responsibility. And the one observation that I have after being on this committee and looking at it is if we act responsibly as an individual and stop. A lot of times it causes oncoming traffic to, to wonder what we're doing. And suddenly they stop, even if there's not a crosswalk, and let people cross the road. <coughs> so I would ask, I'd like to thank Chief Brinkley for all his help. He's been really instrumental with it, with our policemen giving out lights from some of the money that was raised um, to people that don't, didn't have lights on their bicycles. So hopefully we'll all have a safer summer and um, encourage everybody to be aware. Uh, thank you for your efforts and that committee. They've done an, an excellent job and increasing awareness is the key. And it is hard. Yeah, I, I try, drive down the beach road a lot and you've got to remind yourself a little bit that there are people trying to cross the street. You see them on the side and hmm, are they going or not? Uh, well, they're hesitant to step out because they don't know if you're going to stop. I don't blame them. <laughs> no, I don't either. And I will say that the Tourism Board um, has um, all of this paraphernalia in the uh, Agut Brown. Both. Um, and over in Manio. Mm -hmm. So um, if, if anyone in the audience needs quite a few of these, that's another place you can get them. They have been distributed out to numerous businesses. Mm -hmm. We've given them to every Tanger Mall, restaurants motels to encourage all their guests to be aware. Well, thank you all again. Education. Um, due to, to staff's good foresight, I have a consideration of a resolution opposing implementation of the Biggert Waters Flood Insurance Reform Act of 2012. And, um, let's see. Bear with me, let me get it on my screen. As y'all know, we've been uh, dealing and anticipating with increased flood insurance rates and change, changes in rules that will, will really have a dramatic effect on insurance costs for everybody in town uh, and, and up and down the coast. And Wrightsville Beach, recently adopted a resolution uh, in opposition of implementation of the Bigger Waters Act, which is what changed the um, changed some of those key provisions. And I guess I'll read it. Uh, resolution of the oops. We've got the one from Wrightsville Beach. Is that correct? No. Yes. 
No, okay. Ours is up there. Sorry, it just took me a minute to get to it, y'all. Uh, resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the Town of Nags Head, North Carolina, opposing the implementation of the Biggert Waters Flood Insurance Reform Act of 2012, whereas Congress approved and the President signed into law the Biggert Waters Insurance Reform Act of 2012, and whereas the Act would eliminate subsidies for flood insurance, and whereas the Biggert Waters Act removes subsidized rates, pre-firm rates, for many structures and allows rates to increase by 25% per year until actuarial rates are achieved effective July 1st, 2013. And whereas the 25% rate increase for properties in the floodplain would include, but is not limited to, any residential property that is not a primary residence, any severe repetitive loss property, any business property, or any new or lapsed policy, and whereas there will be a rise in the limit for annual rate increases within any risk classification of structures, such as primary residential properties, from 10% to 20% effective July 1st, 2012, and whereas the increase in flood insurance premiums will financially impact many homeowners currently living along the coast next to rivers, estuaries, bays, sounds, and oceans that lawfully constructed their homes as allowed by the National Flood Insurance Program, and whereas the dramatic increase in flood insurance premiums will impact the sale, purchase, and construction of homes in the special flood hazard area and will likely result in foreclosures and owners that need coverage choosing to cancel their flood insurance. Now therefore be it resolved that the town of Nags Head, North Carolina, opposes the implementation of the Bigger Waters Act as currently adopted due to the dramatic financial impact that it will have on coastal residents residing in special flood hazard areas throughout the United States. Make a motion that we pass this resolution. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you all. I'm, I'm not sure how many. It's, it's a voice crying in the wilderness, I think. But if enough voices cry, maybe we can get something changed there. Um, we did, uh, I will report on two, two meetings that I've shared with Mr. Ogburn here recently. Uh, we did have a, a brief meeting with Malcolm Fearing this morning. Commissioner Sadler was present and David Ryan. And we talked about safety and the options to improve the safety at Little Bridge. Uh, uh, Mr. Ryan is going to actually draw up some proposals uh, that may fit within the rules of NCDOT and get those to, to NCDOT and the correct people there. But we're, we're looking at having a, a workshop actually for our August mid-month meeting and inviting DOT to come. But being able to actually get some answers, they, they suggested that we prepare questions that we have um, so we can get something accomplished to it, come, come to some agreement on improving that area for safety. The, the things, the specifics that we threw out there were similar to what we discussed last time, improved signage, um, flashing lights or, a, or even a stoplight, um, speed limit reduction, uh, ped pedestrian bridge. We, we, I think we all agreed that was the ultimate in safety. However, it may, it's, a, it's a longer term solution, not a short term solution. Um, so hopefully we'll come together on those and see what we can do within, within DO, NCDOT's protocols. And our, our representative, uh, Mr. Fearing, was very helpful with that. Um, we did go on to discuss drainage and poss the possibility of NCDOT accepting that drainage from Vista Colony and Nags Head Acres and then us having the ability to route that to a different ocean outfall and basically equalize some of the hydraulic load on those outfalls. Right now the um, the Red Drum outfall has about three times as much flow through it as the, the southern ones do. So we'd like to even that out some and make make it a better system all over. And um, again, Mr. Fearing took that information with him and uh, we, we also agreed that we would accept the maintenance of those areas that we are using to convey that storm water, which we basically have already done with our, our um, our sidewalk and multi-use path there. Um, Mr. Ogburn and I also uh, journeyed to Raleigh yesterday uh, to 
we were just trying to be present and wave the flag for our bill. Uh, however, our bill got yanked a couple of hours probably <laughs> before we got there. Uh, there were concerns from the, the realtors, uh, representatives, the credit unions, and um, and the Vendor Black was there on, on right. somebody's behalf. I think their client's behalf, actually. And there was another group, the title insurers, title insurance. Had, a, had a small interest in it. And, and I, you know, I think their, their concerns revolved around a broad authority to, they were concerned that, somebody, that, that some town, not, not necessarily us, because <laughs> we're good guys, um, would take advantage of having a house just on the dry sand beach, say it's 10 foot past the dune, and they felt like this proposed legislation was a little too broad and would allow something like that. I think that the, the, the key to getting this passed is going to be defining it somewhat narrowly, uh, narrowly enough that those folks are comfortable, that, a, that somebody who's making a mortgage on the property doesn't feel like they're going to have the house swept out from underneath them. And I'm, I, think, I think there's a way to do that, but it sure is difficult um, setting that, that line. You know, you set the line that you've got to be back from that vegetative line. Maybe there's some combination between mean high water and how far in front of that first line of vegetation you are. Uh, but we haven't come up with that formula yet. What we agreed to do was they, uh, they pulled the bill. It's still alive for the short session and we will try and come together with those representatives of the, uh, the North Carolina Association of Realtors, the title insurers, and the credit unions, and see what we can work out that might be acceptable and, and more narrowly define what we're trying to do. It, it may also be fair to point out that those concerns had not been voiced to the bill sponsor or anybody else who'd been involved in the process till yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it was a complete surprise, and uh, which is unfortunate since we'd been very, various people have been very involved in working on that, and it was pretty well known. Um, and in fact, I'd had a talk with uh, Mr. Farrell in the past about this, and um, they didn't ever tell us that they had any problems. So they didn't give us adequate opportunity to resolve them before the matter could go before the, uh, uh, the panel for adoption. And also, when it was introduced in the House, it passed unanimously 113 to 0 and uh, did not get heard in the Senate. But the other thing to add, if there is a positive that Senate Bill 151 did clarify some of the other issues that we were concerned about that we do have the authority to enforce other ordinances on the public trust or the ocean beach. The, the battle that Emerald Isle was fighting um, has been cleared up, I think, in Senate Bill 151 and they were uh, being challenged for a taking for regulating passageway up and down the beach for emergency vehicles. So there is one silver lining in that, I guess. Mm -hmm. Baby steps. Good. <laughs> a bright side. <laughs> Any other business for us tonight? Um, we did have that request for a closed session, which we will get to in just a moment. I just want to say, Mayor, I appreciate your allowing me to attend that on the little bridge because we, all of us have had other emails from other people concerned about the safety there at the little bridge. And I will say that I truly believe that our DOT representative, Mr. Fearing, is, is on this, and we will see some resolution. Um, naturally, the perfect solution is getting that wonderful million dollar plus um, walkover, but I think that is um, not the short term solution. So um, hopefully, we'll get something working next month. Yes, ma'am. I, I think we've got a good start on it. Anyway. I do too. I really do. Uh, John, if you'll give me the general statutes that apply, I will make that motion to go into closed session. Yes, sir. You uh, need to go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3 in order to discuss the um, town's pending condemnation actions. Um, also, I'd like for you all to discuss the, I didn't mention this, but I'd like to discuss the um, Board of Adjustments uh, case that's been appealed to Superior Court involving the Dairy Queen sign uh, and also to confer with the uh, board's attorney and preserve the attorney-client privilege. So moved. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, like sign. Motion passes unanimously. And we will go into closed session and be done in a few minutes. Ready? We're going to come back into open session. I'll ask our attorney, Mr. John Lottie, to report out from our closed session. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The board did cons uh, confer with the uh, town's attorney regarding the various uh, condemnation cases that the town has filed, uh, as well as the uh, status of the uh, appeal from the Board of Adjustments decision in the uh, Dairy Queen sign case, uh, and conferred with the attorney in uh, order to preserve the attorney-client privilege, but no action was taken. Thank you, sir. Anything else for anybody tonight? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign, we're adjourned. <laughs>